Hi folks, welcome back to the channel. We just popped out today with Ellie over there. Say hello Ellie. Hello Ellie. And Dad. Say hello Dad. Hello Dad. Uh, we're having a little nosy about at the Jet Age Museum. Another attraction here in Gloucester. Let's go and check it out. Well, behind me is the last wooden aircraft built it's actually called the Gloucester Gamecock. So make of that what you will. After entering and briefly walking through the main hall, we were offered the chance to see inside the cockpit of a Vulcan bomber. Yeah, that's fine. You could go to the back hey, seat to listen to. A bit of a tight squeeze. Well, have a look at you can go look at the cockpit. We don't have a system to find the seat first. Kids love doing it, but they Yeah, that's right. <laughs> Oh my god, it's a long way up here. I know, right? <laughs> <laughs> this was an incredibly tight squeeze for both myself and Ellie. And we were quite shocked to find out that the crew would be able to be up this ladder in position and airborne in four minutes. Yeah. Yeah. Right, welcome back. Have you been in one before? No. No. <laughs> Funnily enough, no. <laughs> <laughs> there are a number of open visitors. Um... Help me. <laughs> Nuclear bomber designed for the Cold War, uh, and his job was essentially, the, as the crews knew, to fly a one way mission somewhere in Russia, knowing that if they ever needed to go to war for real, they wouldn't have anything to come they, home they to. They wouldn't be coming back, yeah, absolutely. Um, crew five, two pilots, three rear crew. The pilots get all the glamour. Yep. And uh, <laughs> also have ejector seats. Ah, yes. Well, pilots are just dumb, lazy drivers. <laughs> I'm not to say that because I'm a dumb, lazy driver. Oh, uh, okay. My face. The rear crew are the smart ones. They don't get jet seats. In emergencies, they have to get out the way they can. Ah. It didn't always work. No. Um, I can it, imagine. It was completely unarmed uh, as far as defensive armour went, apart from its speed and the fact that it carried jammy equipment. And right. it was... Ridiculously overpowered, it handled like a fighter. It's why you have sticks and not yokes. So, apart from the pilot, what we got? We got uh, three air crew. You've got guy in the middle is the, and they were all, all military air crew, were male, um, is the navigator. Our fantastic guide was both enthusiastic and very knowledgeable. Um, lots of modern technology. This yep. was the world's first fly by wire aircraft. There's no mechanical connection between the cockpit and the control surface of the wings. Right, okay. It's done purely yeah. with electrical wires with hydraulic yeah, actuators on the wing. Right. Late 1940 design, that's astonishingly mm. Yeah, enough. it is, yeah. Of course, every Airbus worked that way. Mm. Yeah, yeah. Um, went to war, was in the Falklands, 82, which was in his last year of service, yeah. astonishingly. If the yeah. Argentinians postponed their invasion right year, we could have retaken the islands. Thanks, Mike. Thoroughly enjoyed that. We have just both been up in, I'm not sure whether you can see because of the sun, we have just been both up in the cockpit of that. It was very interesting in there, wasn't it? It's uh, good to see, very tight. Very tight. <laughs> very tight. I, th I think slimmer people than us. There's a five, five, five crew, five, five man crew, crew in there. And they would have me, been ready to launch in four minutes. It took four minutes for me to get up the ladder, so <laughs> I'm not sure, not sure we'd be any good as a crew for that. But very interesting nevertheless. It's what's left of a Harrier jump jet. I reckon that Harrier jump jet did one jump too far. Extremely tight in there, I don't think I've got the right build to be a pilot. Gloucester Javelin behind me, which was Britain's first Delta Wing fighter. Pretty awesome.
Built by Rolls-Royce, this was Britain's first production jet engine. And this, the Gloucester Pioneer, was Britain's first ever jet aircraft. Built by the Gloucester Aircraft Company here in Gloucester and assembled secretly in two garages in Cheltenham. This is the Gloucester Meteor and was the UK's first jet fighter. Almost 4,000 were built and it served with the air forces of no less than 18 countries. First flying in 1943, it was the only jet to see action in World War II. Right, let's wander around and see what else we can see. All right, lads. This really is a brilliant museum, just on the outskirts of Gloucester. Another piece of Gloucester's history, a bit more modern. And the best thing about it is it's free. It's totally manned by volunteers. Please make a donation if you do come. But it is really well worth a visit. Hmm, I think I know somebody who'd like that scooter. On the 27th of July 1942, the Gloucester Aircraft Works was attacked by a bomber. It was driven away by anti-aircraft fire, but dropped its bombs over Cheltenham, one of which landed just behind the Ritz Cinema, but didn't explode. It was defused by the bomb disposal squad of the 1st Gloucestershire Battalion, and this is it. Pretty good here, isn't it? Brilliant, isn't it? Absolutely brilliant. Lots and lots of information. Really good. This tapestry marks all the RAF sites here in the Cotswolds. Ah, right, we're in the Concorde seats. What do we think? Oh, comfy. How long to New York? Oh, five hours. I'll <laughs> do. We stepped back outside again, admired the view across the Gloucestershire Airport runway while we waited for our next tour, which was to see inside the Hawker Sidley Trident, the first auto landing airliner. What pictures? <laughs> tea and coffee. And what happens after the tea and coffee goes on in there. <laughs> oh wow. There you are. Have a seat now. There you are. It's a little bit more roomy than the Vulcan. Yeah, it is. That was extremely tight. Yeah. Look at that. I have flown a plane before. Yeah, and me. Just a little bit. We've both done that over From there. there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. We threw a Cessna each as like a birthday oh, present. Right. Yeah. Okay, yeah. That was quite good. Bought us by our dad, wasn't it? Yeah, yeah. it was good. Yeah. Right, instruments. Wow. <laughs> okay. Where do we start? Instruments, your uh, <laughs> controls there, duplicated controls. Yeah. Um, Two sets of controls here, except for what those are, you know, the map display and that sort of thing here. Uh -huh. uh, within that uh, cross there, bounded by the white paint, are the basic controls of the aircraft, uh, basic instrumentation of the aircraft, which would uh, keep it in the air. Controls for um, adjusting the trim of the aircraft and all that sort of thing. Yep. And. Uh, your radar display there, which looked forward about 100 miles, I think, which would give the pilot an opportunity to uh, either fly through or round. Right, okay, to react to whatever's there. But the main thing is that in the middle there is your original sat-nav display. Wow. 
<laughs> that is a paper display, a moving paper. Oh, it's paper. A moving paper display that the pilot would load in every time he, he flew somewhere. Wow. And it would tell the cabin crew exactly where they were at a, a particular place in time. Yeah. Not where you've been. Just where, where you are, yeah. Where you yeah. are. Yeah. That's I mean, amazing. And uh, depending on which route, they would load a different route in. They would in, load a different wow. route in. Yeah, yeah. It's a bit different to these days. <laughs> just push a few buttons and off you go. <laughs> Amazing. Uh, the flight engineer's display here would uh, tell him the... Uh, what's going on, yeah. What's going on, air conditioning, airframe, engines, hydraulics and that sort of thing. Fantastic. Which is now, actually, that is now redundant. That's probably a chip somewhere, I think. Uh, it's just a, yeah, probably a, a small microchip the yeah, size of your thumb. Okay. Fantastic, thank you very much for that. Pleasure to have you with us. Uh, it's been a pleasure to come. I've, I've Enjoy lived in Gloucester all my life and not visited, so... Enjoy the rest of your visit. Exactly. Yeah. Yeah. Brilliant, thank you very much. Thank you. After another thoroughly interesting talk and our second cockpit of the day, sadly, it was time for us to leave. But not before we spent a few minutes plane spotting from the other side of the airport. Well, I hope you've enjoyed that little look around the Jet Age Museum here in Gloucester. Uh, Dad's still inside somewhere, chatting up one of the volunteers. Um, it's been really interesting, isn't it? What do you think? It's, it's been very interesting. Yeah, really, really yeah, good. I've loved it. Nice. I didn't realise there was so much no, in it. No, no. Nice learning about a bit more of Gloucester's history as well, which yeah. is really good. Because yeah. this is history, nevertheless. And um, we did get to go in the Vulcan. We did. Kind of. Very, it's a little bit tight. Very tight. <laughs> but Mike, the volunteer, big shout out to you, sir. Um, full of information very interested um really good all in all i think and the big thing it is free you yeah. can make a donation we encourage you to make a donation um but nevertheless it is free for entry well if you have liked it you do know what you gotta do hit that like button subscribe if you can not only to my channel but to Ellie's as well two bears college link in the description and we'll see you on the next one say goodbye ellie goodbye bye ellie